to Adobe Illustrator for Cartographers. I'm Dr. Heath Robinson, and in this lesson we're going to be talking about how to produce arrows in Illustrator for our flow mapping. Anytime you need to show movement in a map and you don't have animation to do it for you if you're just looking at a static map, using arrows and using flow mapping techniques are a fantastic way to indicate movement uh, and direction and so forth in a map. So we need to take a look at how to produce these inside of Illustrator. We're going to do it in a couple of different ways. I want to show you just how to add arrowheads uh, to basic paths like we've been creating them. The first thing you'll notice is that I have created a new layer called Curves, just for the sake of the example here. Well, the first thing I can show you is just the arrowheads. I'm going to go ahead and draw a straight line out. Go ahead and make it black, make it a bit thicker so that you can see. And then I want to add arrowheads and I can do this under the stroke palette in later versions of Illustrator. Notice how right now I've got a very limited uh, palette here with stroke. All it's showing me is the weight of the stroke that I've got. Illustrator will let you collapse or expand all of these different palettes in order to get exactly what you want on the screen. So there's like a, a so there's a condensed version of a palette and then a much more expanded version of a palette. If you see these little arrows over here by stroke, you'll notice that if I click those, now stroke is completely gone if I need a space for other things on uh, my screen. If I click it again, there is stroke fully expanded and I have all of the different stroke options. Click it again, I have a sort of a medium level of options and again, and I'm back to just showing the weight. So if you, even if you've got stroke on, but you're not seeing particular options that I have, it may just be that you need to continue to expand the stroke options until you see them. So here with the completely expanded stroke options, I see down here that I have arrowhead options. Arrowhead, this is one side, and here is the other. You'll notice there's lots of options. I'll put, uh, there we go an option for the other side of the arrow. And then if I don't like the way they look, if they're too large, I can adjust the scale of the arrow. Oh, that's looking much better. Now I've got an arrow that's been drawn very easily just by using the arrowhead tools. By the way, they move to the location of where you find the arrowheads. Uh, in different versions of Illustrator. In one version of Illustrator that I have, and I believe that is still CS4, uh, but in earlier versions before they moved it, you will find the arrowheads not down here on the stroke options, but you have to go up to Effect and then Stylize, and then in here you will find arrowheads. I won't here, this is, C this is Creative Cloud, so it's over there in the stroke palette. But if you don't see it in the stroke palette and you're using an earlier version of Illustrator, you may have to go to the Effect and then Stylize option in order to find the arrowhead option to apply to a line. Just be aware of that. I think it makes does make much more sense over here in the stroke palette, but uh, you can still get to it in the effects menu. I've been doing it for years, so no big deal. Okay, so that's pretty useful. You don't have to worry about trying to draw in all of those shapes on your own. If you're trying to show movement from one place to another, you can just use the arrowheads, all of these preset arrowheads, all of the different sizes, and just attach them to a line. This is no problem at all, and you can create some fantastic effects this way. What if I wanted to show a little bit more movement along a more organic kind of curve? I'm going to use the pencil tool here, and I'll just freehand out a curve. There's a curve. And I can do the same thing. Add some arrowheads. Oh, maybe I don't want one on that side. Scale down a little bit. Maybe that's what I want. So I can add an arrowhead to a, an organic looking curve as well. Let me show you what happens when I use this in conjunction with a brush. I had created a very simple art brush for one of my different kinds of highways here. And I'm going to apply that brush to this line. There we go. Let's add our arrowhead back to that. Over here, select an arrowhead. Maybe it needs to be a little bit larger this time. I'm going to scale up. And now you can see that I do have a little arrowhead on the end of that. It did not take the particular brush that I had and apply it to that arrowhead. Let me also show you that the reason that the arrowhead is black is because that's the current color of the stroke. If I were to convert that to red, now notice that what's going on here. I've got a line here that is red, 
but it has a black and white brush applied to it and you can tell that the actual color of the line is still red because it's got the little red arrowhead on it. That might be exactly what you need. This might look absolutely fantastic with a black arrowhead on it or when you create a brush like that just use the stroke color to adjust the color of the arrowhead and it could be exactly the effect that you're looking for. Before I go on to show you some other things with that I want to show you how to make some very precise curves that you don't have to freehand if you're just trying to show movement from one place to another. Because it is very difficult to get uh, a very smooth curve with the pen tool that may look as professional as you want. You've got two different points. See, I didn't make it like a perfect curve there between those two. So there's a better way actually to make curves when you've got to be very precise about it and you're not just trying to freehand it. No sense in freehanding it if you have a tool that will create a fantastic curve for you. So the next thing we're going to look at is the uh, Bezier curve tool in which we use the pen tool.